Today it finally happened after hours of hours of hours of trying and failing. I won the one and only thing Fortnite really matters about right now, Frost Knight. I am so amazed, so happy, a huge thanks to the group that I played with, to all the groups that have been playing with me and to Kurush1 for introducing me for the first time to this strategy, the Floor Launcher Open Courtyard strategy that I'm going to be going through in this video was super lucky that a Kerbinian here had the entire thing built in his Storm Shield defense so that before going in there we could talk a little bit about the strategy, how we wanted to organize things, how the strategy worked and basically you want to have an area around the burner where the husks are being propelled into the air so they take fall damage and die. So it is about dealing with husks via physics and not as much by the normal gas traps of course you need gas traps you need kill tunnels to manage things to delay them to take out all the creep especially in the early waves you have a huge lava roof it's eight tiles long 20 wide what we have here you don't need it that big but this was what we this was how we started going through the strategy as a team trying to find out what do we want? Are we all on the same page? Where do we drop off the loot for the constructors? Went in with two strikers and two heavy bases. Uh, like wave one and two is about getting material, super easy. Got the floors. On wave three, the lava roofs are starting to come along. So I'm just going to be going through a little bit about how things were going on for us. Wave four, starting up with the trap tunnels, getting those outer things up and running because you have the floors on the inner area. It's like greatly about getting the shell up and running while the resource gatherers are getting everything and like wave five is where you really get the kill tunnels up and running where you need to make sure that everything is ready and this is also where you need to have thought about the bundle bus because you're going to be needing it like right around the corner when the bosses are going to be starting so this here is how our base was looking around wave five as you can see the lava roofs are coming around the bundle bus get it before wave 6 because you're gonna need to do this multiple times in the game we have we have many bosses and they can just wreck the base they can demolish everything and you want to distract it pull it away from the base once that is done that's like the first milestone in the game just before the 30 minute marker things are pretty peachy you're gonna have some exploders it's not a huge thing if they blow up when you have this strategy up and running but by the way, 8, you have another boss and you have smashers and you may not be fully up and running unless you like really have good resource gathering. Be sure to fill like blue glow in the burner. Keep it at 25% so that you can get the freebie downloads of blue glow and then fill it up completely so people can farm. The fall damage is real. <laughs> it, is, it is really real. It is Ben beware unreal real. That is how crazy it is. And when you play this, no matter what role you have, always be ready to fill the burner. If you don't know when something completely crazy is gonna happen, exploders gonna go off, takers coming out of nowhere, teleporting smashers, we have a lot of lag in the game. So always be ready, keep an eye on the health of your teammates, and be sure to go in there, fill the burner, ninja repair, put down a slow field, block a smasher with your teddy tower. I mean, this all depends on the class that you are playing, but always keep in mind, even if you are farming somewhere far away, be ready. If you need a heal, you can take a skydive before a wave ends, then you're gonna respawn with full health afterwards, but make sure that you're not the only one that's gonna be alive. On wave 13 we had a boss again and the lag was really starting to kick in. What we noticed was that we had a lot of charging smashers in our base, most likely due to the slopes, the edged walls that we had in our inner area. So you may want to like fiddle a little bit around with that. Around wave 14 we had another one of those explode or clean up things. You can use a teleporter, you can bash them and put one of those slopes above them. And after that, it's really just about maintaining your base, upgrading, always making sure that the farmers get the time they need. You have the storm eye large enough for people to go out there, gather materials. By wave 19, you're going to be having takers again. You need to know how to deal with these. You absolutely need 
to be able to survive takers. We have multiple taker waves and it's okay if one or two players go down, but you really need to make sure you have survivors in your squad that know how to get away from the takers to scoop fast in there and refill the burner because it's game over if it doesn't happen. Like I said, always be ready to fill the burner suddenly out of nowhere. Things are just gonna go crazy and you need to be like have blue glow on you. Make sure you have blue glow dropped in the base where you can get it because like we had so much lag suddenly our burner just dropped from amazing to almost game over in a split second and we had no idea why. Besides having teleporters you can build these like random slopes to go around. It's also very efficient against bosses. You're gonna be dealing with them multiple times. When you have a boss wave like here, wave 21, position yourself at the spawns so that you can target out the bosses right away and pull it away from the boss. From the boss, from the base. You don't need to take it out. And like here we we kinda went two people on one and I got ganked by one of the husklings. They, I mean, a huskling one shot at me. So that is how weak you are around wave 21. You really, really need to be thinking about survival more than taking out husks. So pull the bosses away. They're gonna wreck the entire base. Let the traps do their job in the base, taking out things. These like slope kind of things can be a really, really good thing because you don't want to be walking on the ground floor. You don't want to be provoking any like exploders or anything. So keep it in the air. And stay like super safe we had a bit of a boom wave on wave 23 this is playing like one hour 40 minutes you don't want it to end here and a chain reaction of exploders can pretty much end the fun for you completely so be sure that again stay safe survive and it's not the end of the world if things blow up because you actually don't have traditional tunnels here where you have traps on all sides in a tunnel that disappear. If a exploder goes up, it's gonna be a bit of metal. It's gonna be a few of these floor launchers that disappear and then you are up and running again. And if you have resources, if you have two gatherers, you should be pretty peachy on everything, perhaps except herbs and nuts and bolts. So that is like really important to keep in mind. Run speed is a thing, you want the bundle bus, you may want the shovel or the new guardians will sword. You want some kind of movement speed to get away from the takers. And once you reach like wave 25 here, you probably rip the factory, the town, the everywhere where you could find nuts and bolts. So be sure to hit the supply drops. Be sure to recycle the weapons and traps you get there for materials, it's gonna add up. And I mean, for us, the lag started to get really, really, really silly here with rubber banding moving in, in weird edges. Refill those traps. They're going to be running out even if you have really good heroes such as the Machinist. If you have survivor bonuses for increased trap durability, your traps are still going to be running out. So be sure to keep an eye on them at any time and refill. Tell the constructors if you're not the one playing. Wave 26 is a heavy smasher wave and we had heavy smashers with heavy bases that had lag and I had lag and it was really really just because everything was so smooth up and running that we made it as you can see here. It's just amazing to look at. Two drops and they die no matter what type of opponent they are. Smashers, flingers, husky husks, they're just like two drops and it's a done deal. Wave 28 another boss pull it away from the base it is the only important thing this is a game about stalling not about defeating opponents pull it away aggro it try to stay alive if you can but the most important thing is that it won't be getting back to the base and demolish everything wave 29 you're so close everything should be peachy fill up the traps make sure that you don't have floor tiles with missing floor launchers and keep an eye on everything Note the smashers going up and down and just enjoy the view. By now you should be peachy. If you made it this far and lag isn't gonna be killing you, you are at wave 30. You are a skilled taker avoider at this point. If you made it to wave 30, you know how to avoid the takers. The takers cannot damage the burner. The blasters can't, the smashers can't, the flingers can't, but they can fling things upon the burner so that it takes damage. But all you really need to do if you have your traps up and running is just to avoid takers 
for a few minutes and then you are the Frost Knight and you have won the game. Side note, the group that we were playing here is Alexander who was from the Discord. Thank you man very much for hitting me up in there. We met Vool in a completely random lobby, joined in by one of his mates. So this is playing actually the game without a super pre-made team. I mean the Discord and random people. It was amazing, good communications on voice chatting, very mature, engaged, hardcore, amazing players that just made my day, my month, my probably year in Fortnite. So thank you guys very much for that. This here is of course a <laughs> loot the what you get for winning Frost Knight. 30 ways in the power level 128, 335,000 leveling up experience points, some gold, almost 2,000 tickets, some re-perk, some legendary perk up, but the most important thing is the bragging rights that come with having the Frost Knight banner. I am so hyped about finally having this. Replaced my OG banner out with it. So that was pretty much what I had to share in this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed 60 supporters as an Epic Games creator. Thank you very much for that. I hope this guide was useful. I know that there are probably by now a lot of guides about how to do this. This was how we do it, how we do it, how we did it. So I hope it's going to be replicatable for you. Kudos to all the people that have crushed this before me and my team because you guys have been making the road easier for us to walk so thank you guys very much for putting in countless hours of hard work we have tried to do our part i know that i have and you guys have been just sharing so much good stuff so that it has been easier for us to do it as well so thank you guys very much for that as always thank you very much and very much for watching